In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called uh, making a large island. So we're basically given a n times n binary matrix grid. You're given a you're allowed to change at most zero, uh, one at most one zero, right? To be one, return the size of the largest island in the grid after applying this operation. So we are only allowed to change one zero to a one in our entire grid to find the largest island in our grid, right? And then the island is four directionally connected group of ones, right? So you can see here, we cannot go diagonally. We are only allowed to connect a island, right? Islands connected four directionally, basically up, down, left, and right, okay? So in this case, you can see here, we have an example of our grid, right? So we have a one, uh, one, zero, and then we also have a zero and one, right? And then we want to find the largest island after we flip one zero to a one. So in this case, if I change this zero right here to a one, the max island is three, right? If I change this zero to a one, the max island is also three. So therefore, the largest island is three, right? And then if we have something like this, okay. So in this case, we have a we have uh, a two D array, right? And then in this case, if I change this zero right here, sorry. In this case, this zero is right here. So if I change this zero to a one, the max area is four, right? So therefore, uh, there's only one zero. So, so in this case, we the max area is four, right? And if there's no zero at all, then in this case, the max area is basically four, right? Or basically, is the size of the matrix. So in this case, um, you can see here in our constraints is that n is basically grid dot length, which is basically the width. Of our grid and then n is between 1 to 500 and then for each and every single cell in our grid it's basically either 0 or 1. So how can we solve this problem? So to solve this problem uh, one way we can do this is we can use a brute force approach right and our brute force approach basically what we're going to do is that uh, we're going to say find each and every single circle or sorry find each and every single zero right so let's say we have a zero here and it's one zero here. So if I find a zero, right? And then what I can do is that I can basically do a DFS, right? I can do it just like how we did it in number of islands, how we traverse using either breadth first search or depth first search to traverse the island and then find the area of our current island, right? So if I flip this to a zero, uh, to a one, and I have a max variable, right? So once I've done the DFS, right? In this case, for the entire uh, island, right? Try to traverse the entire island. I know that the current island size is three. So then, what we have, what, what we do is that we it basically updates our max to the largest island, right? In this case, the largest island is a three, and then I change it back. Then I go find another zero, which is right here. So I change this to a one, and I find the max area. In this case, is basically a three. So therefore, we update our max. In this case, max is still three, right? So therefore, at the end, we just return our max or in this case, the max island, right? So that's basically one way uh, we can solve it. But the time complexity, as you can see here, if n is basically the width of the uh, of the grid, right? So basically the grid is basically n square, right? Because we have an n times n grid. So if we were to do this approach, we basically, you know, for each and every single zero, we're basically visiting the entire grid. So you can see here, the time complexity is basically big O, of n square, right, times n square. Uh, and then the reason why we do that is because this n square is basically the size of our grid. And then this n square, because in this case, for each and every single zero, we have to traverse, or we have to visit our, kind of like our entire grid, right? Or kind of like entire uh, duplicate cells, right? So because we have to visit the entire island, right, we could have just visiting each and every single value multiple times. So you can see here that the time complexity for this uh, for this approach will be this, right? So how can we be able to optimize this uh, time complexity here, right? How can we be able to optimize it to just, you know, the size of our grid, right, to n square? So in this case, to optimize the time complexity this to the size of our grid, right, the size of the grid, what we can do is that we can be able to figure out how we can be able to cache this, right? If I'm at here, if I'm at zero, um, in this case, how can we be able to find the, uh, the, the islands or the size of our islands around them so that I don't have to traverse the entire island again, right? 
So maybe for example, if I say these are the these these islands has a size of three, right? Has a size of three, and then we we somehow we know that the, the size of this island is a three. So in this case, for this zero, once I visit a zero, you know, I can basically do a DFS, right? Or not DFS, but basically, you know, visiting its nearby island. In this case, this is an island. We know that it has a size of three. And then we just say that, hey, the largest island for flipping this zero to a one is basically three plus a one, right? Because we're changing this to a one. So it's gonna be three plus one, which is basically a four, right? So we need to figure out how can how we can be able to cache this, right? How we can be able to reduce that uh, computation, right? We don't have to do our DFS again and again, right? So how can we be able to say, let's compute the area, or not the area, but the size of the island, right? To a variable that we can save it so that then what we can do is that we can basically just, uh, you know, go to the nearby island and then maybe have some kind of way to retrieve the size of the island, right? So what we can do is that maybe we can use a table, right? To keep track of that. And first, what we have to do is we have to, you know, uh, let's say we have a bigger island, for example, let's say we have one here and let's say this is zero, right? And then this is zero, zero, one, and one. Okay, so in this case, we know that this island has a size of four, this island has a size of two, so in this case, maybe we can have a table, right? Uh, to keep track of that, which in this case, this island has a size of four, this island has a size of two. So what we can do is that we maybe, we, maybe we can use an ID or maybe we can use a, some kind of string to represent that, right? So maybe we can have an ID. The first island that we traverse, in this case, we can have like a integer value, right? Or a different character value or something to, to represent that. But in this case, let's just keep it as an integer value, right? So because, uh, we can we can start with a two, right? Because you can see here one and zero is already taken over. So maybe we can start at two because ID have to be unique. Or what we can do is that we can have a negative value. We can just de keep decrementing the ID, right? So let's say for negative one is our first island that we visit. You know, in this case, this island right here has an ID of negative one, right? So this, I this island right here has an ID of negative one, has a size of four. We do a DFS, explore this island. And the next island that we found is this island right here. And it basically has an ID of negative two, right? So, and then we do a DFS to explore the island and we found the size is two. Okay, so once we have this information available, what we're gonna do then is we're basically just going to, um, going to visit each and every single zero, right? So once we found a zero, what we're gonna do is that we're going to, you know, go for four directional, go all four directionally and trying to find you know, all the, uh, the, basically the size of the island, right? So for this island right here, it has a size of four. For this island right here, because this island has the same ID as the previous island, right? Maybe we can use a set to keep track of that, right? So this island, we know that this island maybe has, maybe we can change this to all just negative one, right? So, so that we know that this island has all has an ID of negative one. So what we're gonna do is that we can basically keep a set, right? So we have negative one in our set. So this has an ID of negative one. This has an ID of negative one. This is a zero, so we don't keep track of that. This has an ID, or this, this cell has an island ID of negative two. So, so far we have those values, those IDs in there, right? So then what we're gonna do is that we're basically just gonna get their value. So this has a, this ID has a value four, this ID has a value two, so therefore this if we flip this to a one, it's basically four plus two plus one for the current cell because we're flipping the current cell to a one, right? So therefore you can see that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? So we have six, four plus two plus one, which is basically seven, right? And then what we do is we basically move on to the next cell, right? So in this case, we have, we change this to a one, right? Or this cell right here. What we're gonna do is that we're gonna look at the ID above us. In this case, it's a one, right? Has an ID of negative one. And then we look at the uh, the cell on the left. In this case, is zero, so we don't keep track of that. The cell below us, in this case, is a, is a one. And then, or in this case, has an ID of negative two, right? So we put an ID of negative two here. And then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna check the cell on the right. In this case, out of bound. 
So we have two of them. So in this case, this has an ID of four, this has, uh, or this ID has a value of four, this ID has a value of two. So four plus two is seven, oh sorry, four plus two is six, six plus the current cell. If we flip this cell, uh, zero to one, it's basically seven, right? So you can see the max in this case is still seven, right? And then if we go to this cell right here, right? In this case, it's the same thing. If I change this to, uh, or in this case, if I visit the above cell, it has a ID of negative one. I add it all to our set. If I, uh, you know, visit the cell uh, beside us, in this case, it has an ID of neg negative two. And then if I visit below us or left, it's out of bounds. So in this case, we don't keep a track of that. So in this case, we have two IDs. This has a, this ID has a value of four. This ID have, has a value of two. Four plus two plus one, if we flip this cell to a one, is basically going to be seven, right? So in this case, the max island is still seven, right? And just to clarify, the reason why we're using an ID here, because you can see here, if I know that this island has a size of three, and I know that this island has a size of three, how do we know that this island is the same as this island, right? So that's the reason why we're using an ID here to keep tracking of unique islands, right? So therefore, this is basically how we're gonna do it, and the time complexity, if we were to do this approach, it's basically just gonna drop from, you know, big O of n squared times big O of power of n squared, right? We're gonna go from this time complexity, we're gonna drop it down to just this, right? The time complexity for this approach is basically this. Right, we're basically just using a table, right, to keep track of that, right, to keep track of the pre-computed value so that we can be able to bring the time complexity down to n squared. So now let's take a look at the code. So the code uh, basically is pretty simple. What I did here is I put these values in a global variable, right, so I have a table. Integer is basically the key, right, which is the ID of the island, and then the values, uh, the value is basically the size of the island, right, and then we have our m m times n, which is not the case because we basically have n, right? Because in this case, uh, the grid is basically n times n. So I put m there, which doesn't really make any sense. But anyways, um, and then you can see here we have our ID starting at negative one, right? Every single time when we visit an island, we're going to decrease the ID by one, right? So what we're going to do first is that we're going to iterate through the array, right, through the grid. And then for each land that we found, we're going to do a DFS trying to find, try to explore the island, trying to find the size of the island, and then we're going to save it onto our table, right? And then we're going to decrement our ID because we want to keep our ID unique so that we decrease it by one so that we consistently making the ID as a negative value so it's not going to contradict with, you know, our any, any cells value in our grid, right? Um, so as you can see here in our DFS, right? So in this case, you can see here, we do our DFS, do our base case check, make sure that this cell is not visited and is not out of bound. And then what we're gonna do is that we're gonna assign the current cell that we visit, right? If this is an island, right? We're gonna change it to the ID so that what we're gonna do is that we know that this land, this cell right here, it has an ID attached to it. So once we want to find if this uh, ID is the same, we want to find unique IDs or we want to find unique islands, we can basically look at that, right? Or in this case, if I want to know the size of it, size of this island, I can look at the ID, right? And then we do our DFS for all four directions and then we're returning a size, right? So what we're going to do then is you can see here after we, you know, get the size of each island and then save it onto our table, we're going to have a max island variable to keep track of the maximum island, right? So for each ID that we have in our table, we're going to update our max island, right? So initially, the reason why we do this is because there could be a situation where we have like no zero at all, right? So in this case, we wanna make sure we keep our max island to be equal to the max island value. Once we do that, is that if, if we cannot be able to find a zero, we can still just return the max island. In this case, the max island is basically the size of our grid, right? Because we initially, we already get this thing, right? We already get the max island already. So if there is a zero, right, we want to calculate the max island. We pass in the row, pass in the column. And then we're going to, you know, 
updates our max island, right? So our current max island or the max island and assign it to max island. And in this case, the calculates uh, max island function, you can see we pass in the row and column. We're having a set to keep track of the unique IDs, right? We don't want to have duplicate IDs and add it onto our uh, or add to our add it onto our calculation. So we iterate through all the directions, right? This directions here we have uh, four directions, right? So one is up, down, left, right. So what we're going to do is that for each direction, we're going to get our current row and column. If it's out of bound, we continue. Otherwise, we want to see if it's zero. If it's zero as a water, basically we can just continue. Otherwise, we're going to get our current cells ID and then we're going to add it onto our set, right? Once we've done that, we're going to get, we have a sum for each and every single set, uh, for each every single ID that we have in our sets, we're going to basically get the sum, right? We add it onto our sum. And then the reason why we're returning sum plus one here is because we want we want to flip the current cell, right, from a zero to a one, right? So therefore, the sum is basically the uh, the size of our island for all the nearby for all the nearby cells for our current cell plus the current cell, right, plus one because we're flipping the current cell to a one. So you can see here uh, after we get the current max island, we're going to update our max island, right? And basically, at the end, we're just returning a max island. So this is basically how we solve the problem. And like I said, the time complexity is basically in square, and it's basically the size of our grid. So in this case, we're basically traversing each and every single cell in our grid once, right? Um, so basically, you can see that this is how we solve the problem. And uh, thank you for watching.